Have you ever wanted to go pro? Standing on the stage in front of thousands of people all cheering your name? You ever sat down and thought about what it takes to go pro? And if it's actually something you could do? Well, over the last few weeks, I got in contact with a few different pros from different teams and regions, and I asked them a few different questions. And they came back with some pretty awesome advice for those who are thinking of going pro, or those who just want to get a whole lot better at Rocket League in general. Now, the pros we have to thank for this advice are apparently Jack, KCP Scrub, Caveman Ben, and Sigums. But before we jump into the advice they have for us, let me introduce you to today's sponsor, which actually offers you more advice to improve in Rocket League. You feel like no matter what you do, you just can't seem to rank up? Feel like you can't improve? Well, look no further than Medify. This website has the top tier coaches in the scene, and it's all very simple. You book a session, get into a call, and very soon you have one of the best in the business going over your replay, pointing out the aspects that you can work on in a one-on-one -on -one session. Not only that, coaches can also offer training plans, which are structured multi-session bundles that are designed to help you dramatically boost your skill and performance. Now, if you want to try a coach, but you don't know where to start, I can personally recommend Xpeer, who some of you might have seen coaching me in a few videos in the past. Definitely worth your time. So if you do want to book a one-on-one -on -one session with a pro right now, click the link below and use my code THANDEVIC20 to get 20% off your first coaching session or replay review. Once again, a big thank you to Medify for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's start off with the basics. I asked these guys how old they were when they first started playing and what age they went pro. Now, Appjack started at a young age of 13 and went pro three years later at age 16. KCP Scrub started at age 12 and has only recently gone pro in the last year, also at age 16. Whereas Caveman Ben started playing at age 17 and went pro just after turning 20 years old. And Sigum started playing at age 16 and went pro at age 22. So already you can see we have a wider variety than some people would assume. It is generally thought that all the pro players are these young 15 or 16 year old kids coming into the scene and rising to superstardom overnight, but that's simply not the case. You have people of different ages who have been grinding away for years behind the scenes. So if you are someone who is still climbing through the lower ranks, just keep in mind that it can take some people years to get to this level, so don't worry about where you are right now. The next basic question I wanted to get out of the way was asking how many hours they play each day, and the answers were all pretty much the same. Kind of. Now, Caveman Ben and Sigums both said their playtime differs depending on whether or not they are mid-season or in the off-season, or about where they are in the split, with it being between 1-5 to five hours in the off-season and then closer to 5-7 to seven hours during the splits, whereas Abjack and KCP Scrub both said somewhere around 6-8 to eight hours a day. So this already asks the question to those of you at home watching, are you putting in this kind of time? Granted, it is a lot of dedication, playing 6 hours of Rocket League every single day while juggling school, work, and a social life, but yes, these are the numbers that pro players are putting into this game. And there are probably hundreds of people who are putting in even more hours. So ask yourself first, can you have this kind of dedication to a video game? With the basics out of the way, next is the big question, the stuff that you should really take on board moving forward. Question 3 is, what was your first step towards going pro? Now, there were two answers for this question. KCP Scrub and Caveman Ben both spoke about six mans and ranked. Scrub says, first step to going pro is finding the right team. I grinded six mans and ranked to kind of get my name known and then found teammates who are on the same page as me. Now, Caveman Ben has a very similar statement, saying, I didn't really think about going pro in terms of steps, but retroactively, I would say six mans. It's the best way to meet people at a similar skill level and work on areas of the game that it's hard to do in ranked i.e. comms. Before six mans though, just tons of ranked, specifically ones and twos. Now, for those of you who don't know, six mans is a competitive platform with the purpose of being a more competitive alternative to the in-game Rocket League rank system. The main goal is to provide an environment where games are taken more seriously and players can improve exponentially with other like-minded individuals. Six mans is literally built with the purpose to help you improve as a player, and you'll often see many high-ranked players talking about it and just how much it can benefit you. So, if going pro is something you have in mind, you should definitely look towards six mans as it's an incredible way to start improving fast. Now the other two pros, Abjack and Sigums, both spoke about tournaments being their way to get on people's radars, with Abjack speaking about the Fusion tournament which was hosted by Johnny Boy and Incivic, and Sigums talking about the weekly Gfinity tournament he used to join way back in the day. No matter the size of the tourney, finding a team and actively trying to compete wherever you can is a great way to start pushing yourself to become a better player, but to also start putting your name out there among other like-minded individuals. 
So something you can try as you start to improve is to put some serious hours into six mans. And while there, get to know other players around your rank and capabilities and get a team going. Players you want to consistently play with and work together to improve. This way, you have people to hold you accountable, other players you can learn from and grind through ranked with, and when the time comes, people you can enter tournaments and compete with. The sooner you find yourself a team to get your foot in the door, the sooner you will actually find yourself learning from those around you and naturally becoming a better player. The next question was one that I found really interesting from a content creator point of view because of the nature of my content. And the answers actually really surprised me. I asked, did you have a routine or a training method to help you get there? And if so, what was it? And every single one of them came back with pretty much the exact same answer. No. All four of them said they just used to grind free play and ranked. They would sit there in free play while watching a show or just sit in ranked and think solely about improvement and playing smart, good rotations and good touches. But apparently Jack did say something I found interesting. He said, when I wasn't in a six man's game, I would be playing ones all day. I also accepted every tryout possible while I was looking for my first team as a bubble player. So I simply just practiced more than everyone. I remember people calling me crazy for doing up to six hours of tryouts a day during the first COVID lockdown. He was going above and beyond, putting more time and effort into training, into playing with the right people, trying out for different teams, working to improve himself every step of the way so that when he finally found something that worked, it worked in a big way. And before long, Jack found his way into Dignitas, arguably the most accomplished team in Rocket League history. So while none of these pros had any real training routine, they did put in the practice. And something to keep in mind, especially when considering Jack's words, is that often people say practice makes perfect. But the more true saying is that perfect practice makes perfect. Training with a reason, focusing in on what you're actually practicing and working towards a goal whether that goal be to learn a new mechanic or to figure out how to better your defense. If you're training with a goal in mind, you will improve faster than someone who is practicing simply to practice. Next, I asked, what do you think stops players from going pro? Now, having spoken to pros in the past, I knew what the answer was gonna be and I was right. Every single one of the pro players answered with pretty much the exact same response. The number one thing that stops players from going pro is the mentality. Losing motivation by not placing in tournaments, not seeing improvements in themselves. Not everyone gets on an org where they don't have to worry about a job, playing and school all at once. And that's too much for most people. I think Caveman Ben put it nicely with his response, saying, From speaking to other players and just seeing how a lot of the bubble scene interacts, I would say 90% of it is mentality and 10% of it is skill. Most players who I think have potential, who eventually fade out of obscurity, mainly lack the competitive drive to go pro and put in the effort, or just don't have the maturity to stay in the team environment for longer than a month. And while that by itself is well said, when you have four players from four different backgrounds and regions all saying that the mental side of the game is the reason people don't succeed, you have to take that on board. You have to be willing to give it your all, to really have a drive to get better and to make it. Otherwise, someone else is gonna take that spot. And that's a hard thing for people to think about. Even Scrubson in his response, having school in Rocket League is a struggle for me, but it's working out somehow. But I can see how this would not be possible for most people. He then continues to say, anyone can be good at the game at pretty much any age. It's all about the time you put in and work. So knowing that you need to stay incredibly strong in the mindset aspect of things, if you want to make this a reality, we move on to the final question. I asked, if you could give one piece of advice to anyone looking to become a pro player, what would it be? Now, personally, I think it's better to just read you word for word what each of these pro players said instead of trying to summarize in my own words. Apparently Jack said, My in-game advice is to do what I did and focus on 1v1 and mechanics. The future of the game is all about speed and mechanics in my opinion, and so that needs to be a priority. My other piece of advice is to not think it's what you would imagine it to be. There will be times where you dislike what you do. It's like with any job, but you still have to get on the game and put in that regular 6-8 to eight hours a day practice. KCP Scrub replied, The advice I would give is to never give up. People turn pro at all different ages and peak at all different times. If you really want it, you will get it. Just make sure to stay consistent and put in the worthwhile hours, not just playing ranked, but watching professional players play and practicing mech in free play, and of course ranked. Playing six mans is the best way to get yourself known and move forward. Caveman Ben said, Focus on your own improvement and less about winning. If you study your own replays and know where your weaknesses lie, then head into your six man's games or ranked games and focus on your personal growth rather than your ranked MMR. 
Obviously, it feels good to win, and I'm not saying rank doesn't matter, but take more of an objective view of your game. Let's say you're focusing on your positioning. If you lose a close game, but you were happy that you were following your teammates' touches and you were in the right positions, then that's the key thing. Losses happen to everyone, but if you're wasting your time by not trying to improve, then that's truly the greatest loss. Finally, Sigum said, keep your head down, grind. Get to that point where you can hit the high MMR in rank. Get to that point where you learn to play as a team player through six mans. Once you do that, a coach is your best friend. You plateau, it's inevitable, and a coach will be able to point out what you need to fix in order to succeed. So, with the final words of these four pro players, I ask, do you think you have what it takes to go pro? Could you sit down and dedicate six hours every day to becoming a better player? Could you grind away for months even when you may not be getting any results? Could you become the next Justin, the next Monkey Moon, the next superstar to enter our competitive scene? I hope so. Good luck.